Hey, uh, Officer Cardwell, uh, this is O.J. Capone. Uh, New at 6, the lead detective in O.J. Simpson's armed robbery case in Las Vegas plays us what he calls a strange voicemail he received from Simpson. The retired officer now works as a pastor in Mill City. K2 on your side, investigator Joe Douglas talked with him and others involved in that case. And Joe, you made some odd discoveries and found more than one link to Oregon? Steve, there are also some harsh comments from O.J. Simpson's attorney who refers to the detective as fat, lying Andy Caldwell. Caldwell tells me he's sorry he feels that way. Juice, juice. How's it feel to be out? Last month, O.J. Simpson left a Nevada prison on parole. Okay. The former football star was locked up for nine years for taking part in an armed robbery and kidnapping of sports memorabilia collectors at a Vegas hotel. Each one of the lines will have the significant events. Memories of the 2007 case are still fresh for Andy Caldwell, who holds on to keepsakes from the investigation. So it's an actual timeline of the events. It gives you from start to finish. It identifies who's who. Caldwell was the lead detective in the case. He retired from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department in March. Uh, this is our education building. Since then, he's worked as a pastor at the Mill City Christian Church. Pastoring or leading a church is very similar to being uh, a police officer in the community where you're, you're investing where you do want to help people. Caldwell recently published a book about the armed robbery and kidnapping investigation. Uh, I asked him what he most wants people to know uh, about it. But what really happened in that room was a crime. It was a very violent encounter that guns were brought to. The biggest thing, and probably my biggest heartache over the entire case, uh, was this narrative that he stole his own property back. Uh, and then, which it's just not true. Caldwell says many of the items OJ and his partners took had nothing to do with him. Such as uh, the sunglasses from the victim, the hat from the victim, the cell phone from the victim, Joe Montana lithographs that the victim had signed by Joe Montana, stacks of them, West Point football, Duke Snyder, sports memorabilia, Pete Rose. Andy Caldwell's a big fat lying piece of Malcolm Laverne, O.J. Simpson's attorney, disputes Caldwell's claims. Mr. Simpson didn't take items uh, physically. He obviously was conspiring with these guys to take items, but he personally didn't take items. As soon as I saw guys, you know. But Bruce Ramong, the primary victim of the robbery, tells me that's not true. The sports memorabilia collector says Simpson took his cell phone. Did O.J. himself take your phone during the robbery? No. Fromong says Simpson left him a voicemail soon after the crime, offering to return his stuff, but there was a problem. He called on the cell phone, which he took during the robbery. He called that cell phone. Fromong says he eventually got that phone back from police. He says O.J. and his crew took nearly a 1,000 pieces of his property, most of them O.J. related. But Fromong, who's originally from Lincoln City, tells me a California court returned all of it to him, except for 16 items which were returned to Simpson. Uh, there were ties, uh, some footballs, uh, some plaques. Vermong says he obtained everything legally. And it wasn't those items didn't belong to me. Um, some did, some didn't. But I went ahead and relinquished uh, uh, all my rights to those items so that I could go ahead and uh, take the rest of the stuff home. I asked Caldwell about his other big takeaways from the case. His behavior was erratic. And he tells me a strange story corroborated by three other officers. He says it started the day after the robbery when Caldwell and several other detectives went to Simpson's hotel to interview him. His girlfriend was in the room running around chasing a little uh, white dog uh, that was, she was trying to put a sweater on. Um, he was yelling at her that she needed to leave. The room has about eight to ten detectives in it. He sits on the corner of his bed. I sit in front of him and we're just, at this point, I'm not asking him about the crime because he's already asked for a lawyer. We're actually waiting for his lawyer. He's talking, we're taking notes. And then he looks at me after a couple moments and said, hey, did you take my phone? And it, it caught me a little off guard. And luckily my partner, Eddie, was quick enough to say, no, it, it's right there in between your legs. He looks down, he grabs his phone, he picks it up, he pulls it to his chest. And now in, in front of all these people in the room, he throws himself backwards on the bed and he starts just wiggling around with his arms and legs up in the air for 15, 20 seconds as we all just kind of sit there and watch. And then he sits back up as if it didn't happen. Caldwell says Simpson was laughing. Laverne doesn't buy it. And all of this is bullshit. This is all bullshit. They're trying to make it like Simpson was in this delusional state making all these 
wild, kind of crazy type remarks, and he wasn't doing any of that stuff. After the meeting in the hotel room, Caldwell, exhausted from the investigation, says he went to sleep early. First saved message, Friday, September 14th at 7.30 p.m. He says he woke up to this voicemail from Simpson. Uh, hey, uh, Officer Caldwell, uh, this is O.J. calling. Uh, look, my lawyer is taking your numbers. I think he said he called you late tonight or early in the morning to set up this uh, interview. He also said that he will endeavor to get all the guys to, who have to get a statement. Now, two of the guys I really don't know, uh, I hope all is well. And sorry about all of this crap, but <laughs> you take care. Have you ever had a suspect do that before? No, and he definitely implies that he's going to, um, yeah, he's going to be almost a partner in this process. My experience over the entire investigation was just, there was odd behavior. When I walk, walked to the witness stand, I'd sit down on the witness stand, he would smile at me and nod. I had never had that happen before. Uh, in fact, uh, the first time he did it, it caught me a little off guard. Andy Caldwell's a f***ing loser. That's it. He just happens to be a cop that was trying to capitalize on Simpson's fame. Laverne says Simpson was simply being cooperative with detectives at all phases of the investigation. Caldwell says he has no ill feelings towards Simpson and wishes him the best in parole. Live in News Control, Joe Douglas, K2 News. Well, that was interesting stuff, Joe. Thank you for that. New